I got the request to paint Sith Crons, which is basically just black and orange Necrons. And sounds like a cool paint scheme, so why not? And over here, I got a little Necron Lord and some Iron Warriors paint that I'm gonna dry brush all over him. And I just want the black to start shining like metal. I don't really care if I'm hitting all the highlights right and if everything's going the way it should be. It's just a quick pass with this to make sure that the black stuff doesn't look like black plastic anymore. It looks like a dark metal with just a light shine on this. And then we'll start moving on to the other colors and see if we can make the Lord look cool, make his weapon and everything shine orangey and I don't know, make some other details and other colors in there to make him stand out. Now I don't use an airbrush, so if I want something to glow, I usually end up using contrast paints. And because of that, I'm just going to get right into the orangey, glowy parts of this mini. And I'm going to make it a base layer of Flayed One Flesh. And this is a bone color that doesn't cover very well, as you can see here on the side. It's fine, uh, it just needs a couple of layers, maybe two, maybe three, and then you have a good cover. And after that, I'll start working in some highlights before the final layer of contrast paints on there. And I am trying to keep these orange glowy bits on the Necron to a minimum. You see, I think with the glowy parts, you can really accentuate the important parts of the mini. Sort of the, the chest, which is important with Necrons, the deeper lying chest where the power is emanating from, and the weapons. Of course, the guns on the regular immortals and Necron warriors and the big sides and weapons on the others. And then there's plenty of other details that can still get a little bit of attention, but not too much. The, in this sort of paint scheme, either black and orange like this, or black and bright green, that you also see a lot, it's the green parts and the orange parts that need to stand out. All the other parts are secondary. So let's continue with this one, and then we'll move on to highlighting and getting the glowy parts to work. Okay, I don't know how many layers it took me to paint on this flayed one flesh. I lost count after number five or six. It just doesn't cover. So I just kept going and going and going. And finally, I get to something that's, I think, smooth enough. As you can see here, the blade is relatively smooth. I did the crest here, the thingy on his arm there. And I dropped a little bit, very much water down into these recesses in his chest and also here around his hosing. I'm hoping that when I drop in some contrast paint after this, it'll look like it's lighting up, but not so bright as the weapon. So it's clear that it's somewhere recessed in the chest that the light is coming from and not on the outside. Now, he's a character, and because it's a character, there are a few details on there that I would like to highlight. But I've seen pictures of this Sithcron paint scheme online where people use gold to highlight them. So they use gold to paint the head, for example, or these parts here around his chest. And that's crotch guard, whatever that is. And I think gold doesn't look good in this paint scheme for a very simple reason. If you use gold, it's a second highlight on a mini that is supposed to have this bright highlight of orange. And so now you have two things that are drawing the attention. And instead, I think you should keep the rest of the miniature muted as much as possible and work with other colors than gold uh, to keep the highlight on the weapon and on everything that you want to make glow. So... Because it's a character, there's a few more details. I'm gonna use some Rune Lord Brass, and it's a nice metallic. It will give a little bit of a different shine to these different parts, and I'm just gonna dry brush it on. And I'm gonna keep it fairly light. I would like this sort of rough look when I dry brush metals. It'll look like it's worn. It'll look much older than if you were using a normal detail brush and would just paint it like normal, normal paint. And dry brushing this on, on the collar, the face, and maybe some around the crotch guard, and maybe some parts here around the weapon. I have to figure it out as I go. But I want to pick out a, a few details and make it look less black. So that gives a little bit more detail on the mini. As you can see, I did the face, I did his collars, these bits here, and I just very lightly went over the weapon as well. I want the weapon to look black because if this is shining bright, it will look even brighter if the weapon looks really dark. So I didn't go too heavy on there, but just a little bit. And then the rest of the body, I kept all black. And that way you also get a nice contrast with very bright highlights over there and very dark stuff over there. It will make all of this here around the weapon look a bit lighter while all of this over there looks a bit darker. And 
and I don't use OSO, I don't have an airbrush, it's hard to do with a brush, but this way you can still get similar effects with light coming from one side and the other side being darker. And first off now, I'm gonna dry brush all the parts that are going to be glowing and I'm gonna dry brush them with some white. And this is just to make the edges glow brighter because if you then use the contrast paint, it will go over the bone and it will sort of desaturate there, look a bit warmer there, and on the parts that are white, it will look brighter. So if I dry brush the edges, it will look like the edges are glowing brighter than everything else. So I'm just taking some white paint and I am just going to gently dry brush all the edges and don't bother too much with keeping it perfectly smooth and perfectly good looking. You'll never reach that if you dry brush. You could do a very nice edge highlight if you want here and make these highlights look pretty much perfect. But that's just not my style. It takes too much time. And I mean, for a character, okay, you might want to do it for stuff that's just like 20 immortals or warriors. You don't want to do that. You just want to dry brush a little bit and make the edges glow a bit more than the rest. Now the white needs to dry, so in the meantime, I'm just gonna do a little bit of wash on the brass that I did before. And I'm gonna use some Atholian Camo shade, which might just be one of my favorite shades from Games Workshop, with some really cool lore too. If you don't know, I got a bunch of shorts about where the names of these paints come from. But anyway, it's a, it's a dirty green shade that is pretty light and the effect is pretty light. Uh, but it will just tint the brass a little bit green. It will make it look a bit more worn. And I want it to look a little bit green because then it contrasts better with the orange of the weapon and everything else. Because they're great contrasting colors and it will make the orange look more orange and will make the green look more green. Now this is why your butcher has fake lettuce lying next to his red meat. It makes it all look better. Finally, it's time for the actual glow. So I've got Contrast Magma Droth Flame, which is really bright orange. And I'm just gonna cover the whole weapon and all the parts that I want to glow in this paint first. And it is not as watery as some of the other contrast paints and it covers pretty well. So after this, we're gonna have to add some more highlights and so on and so forth. But this is a good base to start with. Imagine that, a contrast paint that actually covers in one layer instead of acting like most contrast paints. Yeah, take a look. Uh, the blade is just flat orange and so are all the other details on the mini. So all the work I did before about highlighting the edges to make the contrast paint look a bit brighter on the edges, that was all for nothing. Uh, I think this contrast paint, because I've never used it before before this, I think you should use it on just white and then you might get some of the actual effects that contrast paint usually has. So. How are we gonna fix this? Well, I'm just gonna take some yellow and I'm gonna start dry brushing the edges. So here I've got flash gits yellow and I'm just gonna start working the edges of the blade and the edges of all the other parts that are orange, just to give it a little bit of a highlight. And I'm gonna keep working on this until I think the highlight is big enough. This is not the final highlight. I'm gonna do something a bit brighter after this, but this will just give it a little bit of a, well, a glow. It will make it look like it's glowing. And try not to hit any of the metallic parts. You don't wanna clean up the yellow from your blacks here. And keep going. Don't make it too subtle. You can go pretty far with this. It's easy to cover over yellow paint if you make a mistake. And it's easy to just take the same Magma Droth Flame contrast paint that we used before. You'll go over it and as you can see, it will just cover it up. So there's no real risk here in painting with this yellow. Okay, painting power weapons with basic techniques like dry brushing isn't that easy, but you can get decent results quick enough and you can always go back later and paint them over once you get better skills with painting power weapons. But let's take a look for now. So here you got the orange blade and dry brushed with the flash gets yellow and it really is starting to look like it's glowing. If you see this model from a distance, it looks pretty good. It's not meant to be looked at from, you know, a few centimeters away, like some display models are. These are models for on the tabletop. You put them a meter away, you want them to still look good, and you'll get that result with this painting. So now I'm gonna brighten this blade even more. I might brighten the, the head part and this part as well, but I'm not so sure. I think maybe I have to just pick out the blade a bit, make it shine even brighter or glow even brighter and that will be enough. If not, I'll just keep going. But for here, I got flayed one flesh and it's a bit of a bone color and I'm not using white. I'm using this because I'm afraid that if I use white, it's just gonna be too bright. And with this bone color, you can make it look like it's shining just a little bit brighter 
just on the edges. And I'm trying to dry brush as lightly as possible to make it really only the edge of the blade shine even brighter. And looking at it now as I'm doing this, I think I'm gonna use white anyway to make it even brighter, but just this edge, because that will make this edge glow as bright as possible. So like I said, now just a light, light dry brush of white and really only try to hit this edge over here. You could do this with just a regular brush and just draw a nice line on here, but I wanna do the dry brushing so that it just spills over a tiny bit onto the blade as well. And it will really give that sense of a very bright glowing blade. Don't forget to do the other side as well. And then we'll see how this looks. I think that looks pretty good. Take a look at him. His blade is glowing very brightly. You can clearly see the edge is much brighter than the crest on his head or the parts on his shoulders and so on. I think it's a good effect. It draws the attention to the blade even more and it also kind of shows that that part of the mini is even hotter and even sharper than the rest. Now, I've told before, this part, people often make it gold and makes it stand out more. And I think like this, it falls nicely into the background, but still is a nice detail. And thinking along the same lines, the base shouldn't be too bright. Uh, you can't really do Martian soil or a bright yellowy dust uh, on your base, because it will again draw attention away from those highlighted parts of the mini. So over here, I got some astrogranite debris and I'm just gonna apply a thin layer all over the base. And that will mute the base, it will make it light gray. I'm gonna wash it to make it even darker and it'll make the rest of the mini stand out even more. You know, you can't make a bright base with a dark paint scheme like this, because then the base is just drawing all the attention. And instead of people looking at your nice blades and faces, they are looking at the base of your miniature. If you could also get some nice 3D printed stuff, like nice Necron Tomb World uh, patterns on there, that would be cool too, but just don't make it shine too brightly. It would work really well with these minis, with this paint scheme as well. Then all you gotta do is quickly wash the base with a little bit of non-oil. And once that wash is dry, just dry brush the base with some Skaven Blight Dinge. And make sure you also hit the legs, the feet and the lower legs of the Mini. That way it will look as if he's been walking through the dust for a while already and he's been kicking up the dust and it's been hitting his legs. Otherwise it looks like he just teleported there, which might be the effect you want with your Necrons. But I prefer to make my guys look like they've been on the battlefield for a while already. And when the dry brush is finished, he looks a little like this. And for a Sith Necron, I think he looks pretty good. Very bright highlights on a very dark background. It just always looks good. And with a few easy techniques like dry brushing, some washing, and just a handful of paints, you can get your army on a table in no time. If you like this video and more of these videos, make sure to subscribe and maybe check out this video here.